what is happening guys welcome back so in the last few episodes we've been getting the van finished off and sorted out we managed to get it done a few hours later than we wanted to for when we wanted to leave but we did get it all done and get it all sorted and get everything working how we wanted it to and i'm so pleased to say that having been away in it for 11 days it worked absolutely faultlessly it's been absolutely amazing the bed is comfortable the hob works the fridge works amazing the pop top gives you the extra space in the bed upstairs as well which we did sleep in seats being swiveled round the new addition which is the avano swing out table that we got on our trip down there so thank you to the guys from avano great bit of kit they do the switch bed and everything for the back so hit them up if you're um yeah after anything like that i'll put the link in the description to their website um yeah it worked amazing so going away part of the idea was i was going to vlog it and i was going to produce a video for being away and I started filming stuff and then kind of just enjoyed being away and switching off. It was the first time we've been away and switched off in quite a while. And yeah, I just felt like a bit of downtime. So we didn't really film a lot, unfortunately. So I apologise about that. But I've got a few trips planned over the next couple of months. And we'll film going away in the van and showing you everything working, everything doing what it needs to do. And that you can get away and you can get, I'd say, most if not all of the places that people with standard suspension can go. On air ride because that's the comment that i got down in Cornwall the most you can't get anywhere in that because it's too low yes you can you've got to have the mindset if you want to get somewhere in it you can get somewhere in it but in this video we're going to do a rundown of the price and how much it costs to build this van so we've got every cost in there from buying the van to as it sits now everything that's been fitted to the van i've gone through the list two or three times i'm sure i've not missed anything off but there probably will be no me anyway i just need to do a bit of a sort of disclosure if you like so the way that we're going to do this is we're going to do everything on retail prices so retail prices as the general public would go to any of these suppliers and buy the parts to build this van now people know how youtube works we get sponsored we get gifted we get donated parts for them which obviously has happened with this build i'm not going to go through any of them links because we've got agreements and things in place with different companies but some of i've not spent the total amount of money that it's cost to build this van so yeah, we're gonna do it as retail prices and I'm not also gonna put on any or take off any of the discounts for like any codes I give out, anything like that. It is all full price, retail price to build this van as it is and there's no labor on any of that either. Um, so yeah, we did it and it surprised me. It was more than I expected it to be. But anyway, right, Dan, usual waffling. Let's get sat in here, get the camera set up. I've got a spreadsheet and we'll start going through it and explain to you how much it costs to take this ex plumbers van into this amazing home on wheels. Right, let's get down to this list. So, first off I wanna say, I apologize if you can hear rustling and wind noise. Um, I've had to leave the house because we've got the builders in and they're making loads of noise, banging and hammering and all that lot. And I just had to get out. It's currently sat in the field and it's about 26 degrees, so I need to leave the door open or I may die. Anyway. Let's get down to it. So the first item that's on the list is the actual van itself. So the van is a 2008 T5, 2.5 litre, six speed, air conditioning, electric windows, long wheelbase. I've said that bit. Um, it was a bit more than I wanted to spend, but I'm pre-COVID prices because I've been around T5s that long. Um, I'd spent months, months and months and months trying to find a van and I couldn't find one. This one popped up and I just jumped on it. Went and got it the next day because I was sick of looking for them and I was kind of happy with the price. So for the van, we paid 6,000 pounds. Yeah, which is a lot in my head. But anyway, we paid six grand for the van. So we got the van, it was time to start the work. So the first episode that we did was we fit the steering wheel. So we went for the Volkswagen up steering wheel, classy little wheel, I like it. It's just nice subtle we don't need all the buttons because none of it's going to work let's just have a nice little steering wheel so the wheel itself was 30 quid and the airbag for it was 167 pounds both of them from ebay i get loads and loads of messages asking what it was where the, where the wheel was from all that i got it from ebay it's a standard volkswagen up steering wheel it's a rubber steering wheel and it's the airbag to match um the airbag i think came from lithuania and the steering wheel came from the uk um yeah, that's what they were. In the same episode, we got to fit in the cruise control, which was, again, high up on the list and something I wanted on the van anyway. And thankfully, I don't hold me to this because I get loads of messages about this as well. I think if you've got air conditioning, air conditioning, electric windows, poverty air conditioning, 
Um, the body control module should be right, meaning that you can just plug in, as I did, the cruise control, wire it in, and it works. Super, super simple job. If you've not got electric windows, I think, don't, again, don't hold me to it, you need to talk to someone that knows what they're talking about. I think if you change the body control module of the VCM, you can still plug it in, program it in, and it'll work. Um, but yeah, great mod to do to the van. Pleasure to drive. Cruise control was fitted for £178. Next episode, we got a big parcel from Transport HQ. And yeah, there's quite a lot here. So I'll just run through this bit of the list because there's a lot of bits and pieces in this. So we got 100 of their invisible trim clips, which are used for the plywood. They were £9.95. 12 metres of the anthracite carpet, which we've got on all the walls. That was £131.40. Uh, 12 tins of contact adhesive, which was for all the carpet. They were £44.95. The T5 LED rear lights, which look very, very nice, were £265.95. Pence. Golf door seal, so the seal that you extra seal that you put on the door, so when you shut the door, it sounds like a golf. They were on there and they were £15.95. Curtains all the way around, so sliding door opposite, passenger rear quarter and the tailgate were £161.96. Pence. Um, three window fitting kits, so the glue to and the primer to bond the windows in was £74.85. pence. The windows themselves, so we've got a window on the sliding door, fixed window on the sliding door, fixed window on the rear quarter, a blank um, or fake rear window on the driver's side rear quarter, and then we've got a sliding window behind the driver's side. These are going to be changed because we're developing some different windows, um, but the windows were £327.85. pence. That window trim, we don't need to worry about because we didn't use it. Cab floor carpet. So they do a carpet that goes over the top of your original rubber floor mat, which means that you've got a carpeted mat like the Caravels, I think it was, came with. Um, Real Nice Mod makes the cab feel totally different. They are £235.95. Side step. So we've got the deeper combi side step, which because you're insulated and putting 12 mm ply on the floor, things like that, you need a deeper step. That was £45.99 rear threshold longer threshold to cover the edge of your floor that you've put down was 48 pounds 95 sunstrip on the windscreen because who doesn't need a sunstrip on the windscreen was 22 pounds 95 the hob and sink combo which we've got in the worktop there is three was 300 pounds and 95 pence the handbrake bracket watch is down here which drop the handbrake back it down because the seat swivel was 29 pounds 95 the trim cover to go over the outside of it was 52 pounds 95 dash trim which goes down the front of your dashboard in between the dashboard and the windscreen stop anything falling down there was eight pounds 95 the transport hq thq 50 fridge with a little freezer in it um, great bit of kit was 399 pounds 95 pence Rusty Lee swivel bases, so we've got the swivels that these two seats are sat on. For a pair of them was £319.90. pence, And for the adapter plates that we developed in one of our episodes, which means you can directly bolt in golf seats onto the Rusty Lee swivels, were £189.95. pence, And the Navis GP7 alloy wheel, 20 inch wheels and tyres were £1,400. So that was that episode. On to the next one. We were, well, on to the next item, which I think was an episode. We started sand deadening and insulating the van. So the guys from Dodo Mat supplied us with the items to do the sand deadening and insulation. We got, I can't remember all the names of them, but you'd got the thinner or the, the I can't remember what it's called. Utile? He told me to say a specific word. I can't remember what it is. I put it on the screen. The normal standard sand ending that you put on, that's on the floor, the walls, the tailgate, everywhere, that's all in there. And we then got the 12 mil closed foam, I think it is, closed cell sand ending insulation that went onto the metal work as well. And then we filled it all with the recycled plastic bottle insulation. That came to £599. Right, next item on the list is cab trimming. So we trimmed the lower dash and the door cards in something called Milano suede, which is, yeah, it's a, it's a suede material. Uh, we did it, I think it was the dark grey version of it. Uh, we used five metres of it um, and some adhesive, which I think I put 
30 quid in for the adhesive. Um, that came to £206.92 pence for the material and adhesive. Um, acoustic carpet, because in the door pockets we've put acoustic carpet on to try and let a bit of the sound through from the speakers. That was £28. We used some Pro XL textured paint for these. We used the cans in a few other places, but I'll put it in this area up because we bought it for the van. They were £29.95 for two cans. And then we used CT1 adhesive, which we used two tubes of. Again, we've used it in other areas, but we used that to glue the pockets back to the door cards themselves. And they were £27.60. pence. Before we carry on with going down the list, I just want to take a minute to thank today's video sponsor, Manscaped. Using Manscaped really helps me to look my best and are trusted by more than 8 million men worldwide for their trimmers, liquid formulations and premium boxes. The Performance Package 4.0 is a game changer when it comes to creating the ultimate men's grooming and hygiene bundle. First off is the Lawnmower 4.0, their fourth generation electric trimmer which features a cutting edge ceramic blade design to reduce grooming accidents and has a 4000k LED spotlight for when you need a more precise shave. The trimmer is even waterproof so you can use it in the shower and say goodbye to mess on the bathroom floor. You thought that was good but want to take your grooming game to the next level? The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the new Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear trimmer. The Weed Whacker 2.0 uses a powerful 7000 RPM motor with an improved steel blade system and upgraded cutting edge performance from their first generation Weed Whacker to better whack your weeds. The Weed Whacker 2.0 is cordless, rechargeable, has a battery life of up to 45 minutes and is created with proprietary technology which helps reduce nicks, snags and tugs in those delicate nose holes. Also included in the Performance Package 4.0 kit are two products I never knew I needed until now. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Simply add the Crop Preserver after your shower for an all-day odour protection. The Crop Reviver is a convenient spritz with cooling aloe vera to quickly refresh the area whenever you need it. Manscaped even throw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0. The Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxes and the Shed Travel Bag. Bring your comfort and boxes to another level. Go to manscaped.com forward slash Dan Chambers or use the link in the description today and get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use the promo code Chambers at checkout. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the promo code Chambers at manscaped.com. So a massive thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the episode. Let's get back to the list. On to the electrical system. So we've bought I've got a nominal amount in here for the electrical stuff. So electrical cable so what the big 16 mil square ca cable for the batteries the solar cable the cable for lighting and for sockets and like that we ran around the van um the switches so we've got the 12 volt switches the dimmers the fuse holders the fuse boards the fuse boxes all those things came to 504 pounds and 78 pence all off ebay all easy all easy to get hold of um yeah all off ebay and then the parts that we had a deal from the guys at Beyond Batteries for were the Leisure Battery, which is a Beyond Batteries 100 amp hour Leisure Battery, Lithium Leisure Battery, which, game changing, Lithium. As much as that phrase is overused, game changing, Lithium, game changing. I've always had AGM lead acid, and I've always supposed on my van build scrimped on my, what now, my opinion, is the most important part, is the electrical system. I've always scrimped on them and put cheaper stuff in. Don't bother. Put the best in that you can afford. Lithium, phenomenal. Many, many, go online, watch a couple of videos on them. The price, in my opinion, outweighs the cons of, yeah, buy one. I'm not what I'm trying to say. Buy one. They're great bits of kit. They work a lot better. Just, yeah, watch the videos on them. They're definitely worth the money. So, the lithium battery itself was £560. The Renergy DCC50S charge controller, which controls the solar panel charge coming in to charge the battery and it also deals with the alternator as well so the power coming from the alternator when you drive to charge the battery that was 229 pounds the solar panel as we just spoke about on the roof is a 200 watt solar panel which was 359 pounds 99 pence might sound a lot for a panel but it's nice slim sleek no big cables out the top looks very nice well happy with it and then the 20 amp 240 volt charger so when you're on electric hookup, we've got the electric hookup point at the back of the van, plug your cable in, that charger will then charge your battery on hookup, and you'll have, as long as the electrical connection doesn't get interrupted, you'll have unlimited power. That was £65, so yeah, not too bad. So, they were those bits. Moving on to the next bit, which is the air ride kit. So, solo air ride kit, big thanks to HQ and solo for 
working with me on all of this lot as well. So the Solo Air Ride struts, they are the four struts that replace, or yeah, four struts and bags that replace your suspension in each corner. They are £2,650. Um, and then the kit to run it all, you've got twin compressors, so you go have twin compressors to fill the tank quicker. And they're the Solo Shh Quiet compressors, really, really good bits of kit. £354.95 for the pair of those. The compressor power kit, so because you're running two compressors, you need to run a, you need a power kit to run two. Uh, £130. Um, Airlift 3H management. So the management we've got is 3H, which is for height. You've got 3P on airlift. There's other different versions as well. We went for airlift. 3P would be pressure based, so it would work on a pressure on each corner to level you get your van to its presets. We went for H because of it being a camper van and it also being a daily driver or sort of a daily driver and towing with it. So you have a little sensor under the van instead. That means if we set the van up to a completely empty van and set all the heights, we then loaded it up with all the camper interior, a pop top roof and all of clothes and everything. And I've not had to do anything with the suspension because the sensor always goes up to the same point, meaning that your um, arch gap, if you like, will always be the same. You're not just relying on pressure. It will put more pressure into the bag. It doesn't rely on the pressure sensor signal. It relies on the arm of the height sensor. So yeah, all discussed in the videos. Not necessarily necessary, but we went for it anyway because it's a better bit of kit. £2,099.99 for the management kit. Air tank, which I can't remember the size of, but I'll put on the screen. £145.95. Drop links, because you need to change your drop links to longer drop links when you lower the van and hub mod it and everything, which doesn't make sense, but it's what you need to do. £38.95. While the van was in the air and we had everything off, I decided to change the drive shafts and the lower arms. So I went for melee drive shafts, and I can't remember the brand of the lower arms. But the drive shafts for the pair, including the stub shaft, were £258.70, and the lower arms were £175. Um, in with the fit with the air ride, I've obviously not included any fitting costs. So I went over and saw my very, very good friends at Lowdown Transporters, and we spent two days fitting the air ride doing all the cutting and everything so there was no cost in that um yeah massive thanks to lowdown transporters chris jack gareth for doing that yeah they are yeah great friends really really good friends so yeah big thanks for them helping me out went over filmed it put a video out which was sort of paying them back for it if you like um so yeah there was no in cost in that but there's probably another few hundred few hundred pounds in fitting because it is not an easy job to fit air ride next item on the list is the pop top roof so the guys at skyline sort us out with a aurora i believe it's called roof which is their 75 mil profile roof they do 100 mil profile 75 mil and then their i can't remember what the other one's called now the lower version which you can't really tell is on there we decided to go for the aurora meaning that we can leave the mattress in the roof and we're not going to take it down every time we put the roof down the lower one i believe you've got to take your mattress down and find somewhere to put it that one stays up there it's out of the way it's fine great bit of kit so the spec that we've got is the bifolding bed board the scenic canvas we've got the marine canvas as well um, which is an upgrade um, we had light cables put in uh, and we had it color coded as well so all of that spec comes to a total of five thousand and seventy pounds great bit of kit yeah if you're thinking of getting a pop top hit them up great bit of kit well 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 worth doing it changes the inside of the van we've now got a four berth camper you can stand up when you're washing up etc brilliant bit of kit brilliant brilliant bit of kit next item on the list is the auto term heater so we've got the auto term night heater um, which is mounted underneath the van um, we've got the comfort controller so the comfort controller the undermounted bracket i think they were the only extras with it that came to a total of 708 pounds and 25 pence Great bit of kit, well worth doing, well worth having a good night heater on that you know you can rely on. Um, yeah, that's the night heater. Next bit on here it says was the tailgate conversion. So we converted from barn doors to the tailgate, which was high up on the list that I wanted to do. Pros and cons for both doors, tailgate. Personally, tailgate's what I wanted, so that's what we went for. I got an absolutely storming deal on the tailgate because it's the same colour as the van. And I also got it with a pair of brand new hinges. Um, the lower corner panels, some rear lights, and a few other bits and pieces that we didn't end up using. Um, 
but I paid £170 for that. And extra added bonus, which was perfect, it was only about 35 minutes up the road. So we went and picked that up, got that on, got it fitted. Banging bit of kit. Conversion brackets were needed for that as well, which are the bits that you bolt to the vehicle that pick the bottom of the struts up. They were £55, and we got the upgraded struts from Tailgate Struts from Transport HQ, because it didn't come with any. Uh, and they were £29.95. So yeah, Tailgate, I just like it. Looks nice. Next bit on the list, audio upgrades. So we got contact by, contacted by the guys at Car Electronics Leicester, uh, who said that they got some new items coming in, and wanted to know if we were interested in fitting them, giving them a bit of feedback. Uh, so, under seat sub, we've got Phoenix Audio, Phoenix Gold uh, Audio under seat subwoofer, which I'll put the code for on the screen. That's £429.99. pence. Banging bit of kit, not too much bass, just enough bass, does a job. Everyone that's listened to it can't believe how much bass it gives out for such a small thing. Dead small, dead subtle, simple to fit. Front speakers, we've got speakers in the doors and tweeters in the dashboard. Again, I can't remember the code, but I'll put it all on the screen. They were £299.99. Rear speakers, which we just wanted to add some more speakers to the rear because I've, in the previous episode, wired a whole system in so that it works on the leisure battery as well. So when you're on a campsite, you can sit in the back and have the stereo on. They were £49.99. And the head unit itself uh, is a Pioneer... Don't know the code. Again, really should have prepared for this more. All on the screen here, which was £469.99. Great bit of kit. Wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, reverse camera input, standard stuff. DAB Plus, all of that. Brilliant bit of kit. £469.99 on that. And then we've got a reverse camera as well mounted to the tailgate, which links to the head unit, which was £59.99. Just give us a bit of help with hitching trailers up, really, is what I use it for. Yeah, great bit of kit. Yeah, that's the audio done. Front seat upgrade. So we went for an upgrade on the front seats. First thing we needed to buy was the single seat base. So single seat base I got from Adam at Lowdown Transporters. He sold me that for £50, which was a great price because some people are asking stupid money for them. It is a modified driver's base, which I've had the question on from a few people. You can take a driver's base and put it on the passenger side. All you've got to do is cut the handbrake bracket off. Same base, just got something else welded to it. Doesn't affect structural strength in any way. They're a little bit cheaper to buy as well. Um, so that was 50 quid. We then went and bought the seats. So the seats are Mark 6 Golf GTD seats. Went for those because they've got a nicer headrest. It's sculpted into the seat instead of sat at the top. We had Mark 5 GT ice seats in the last van. I wanted the GTD for the great check. And they cost me £300. And again, thankfully, we're only 20 minutes away in Leicester. So we got went and picked them up. And then the expensive bit of the seats. So I did this on my first T5 on the Mark 5 GTI seats in 2017. And we fitted the armrests. So these are genuine Volkswagen T5 armrests that were fitted to the seats. They did an episode on. Um, super, super simple to fit. Really are simple to fit. Look mega. I've seen people do this with the cheaper aftermarket armrests. I don't like them. I don't think they look nice. These, yes, they're expensive, but they just look right. They just look right. The other ones are just too big, too bulky, too clunky. These for two pairs were five hundred and forty pounds, five hundred forty quid. But I think they're worth it. Drove this back from Perranporth, five hours non-stop the other day. Cruise control on that we've spoken about. These nice comfy seats, the armrests, and I got back and I felt fine. It was great, so comfortable. They make the chairs comfy. I've sat here with them now, it's comfy. Yeah, that's how much the seats were with the armrests and everything. Uh, next on the list, it says here was. Engine, so we had, no, beg your pardon, no it's not. Next thing was a stealth flap. So we fit here the stealth flap on the back of the van, which is where the electric hookup goes. Uh, great bit of kit, does the job, hides everything out of the way. You can put key safety on there as well for when you go surfing, put your key in, and it's, you need a code to get to it, as Transport HQ did. Um, and the stealth flap hinge is 150 pounds. Um, again, from Transport HQ. Great bit of kit, real good bit of kit, does the job. Um, next bit on the list is engine now. Um, so we had the horrendous oil leak that I spoke about that we needed to fix, which was the turbo flange to the block, which we yeah we take all the turbo and everything off to fix that. Which the gaskets alone, gaskets and seals and things, the exhaust were 115 pounds from TPS, and then the intercooler we had to change the intercooler as well because that had blown. That was 98 pounds 98 pence eBay job. We just went for it off eBay. Next bit on the list is chair pod. So we've got chair pod fitted to the tailgate. 
Um, the guys from Van Trades contacted me and said, would you be interested in fitting one? Yes, we would. I thought they were a great product when I seen them online. So we got one and fitted it to the van. Super, super simple install. Good bit of kit. Does a job. Chairs where you need them to be. That is £580. Yeah, that's all there is to say on that, really. Right, the last section on the list is camper interior. So for all the materials inside here, the side unit materials were supplied to us by the guys at Bossway. So for the side unit materials, which is plywood, laminate and edging, that came into a total of £1,250. Um, the camper unit eyemongery, which is drawer runners, hinges, door latches, screws, that came in at £129.21. The bed materials, so the plywood, the timber and the laminate for the bed came in at £120.02. The mattress that we bought for the bed, which was a small double mattress, which is 75mm foam, 25mm memory foam, that was £104.99. <laughs> Fabric for the seat cushion covers, which is curtains from Argos, was £78.95. And the plywood that goes on the bottom of those cushions for us to then staple the fabric to was £78.95. No, it wasn't. Sorry, that was £12. The fabric was £78.95. Um, water bottles. So we've got the water bottle in the cupboard for the sink to take water from and put water into. We've got two of those. We've got two 10 litre drums and they were £36.95 for the pair. And then the gas locker and fittings. So we've got the, yeah, it's all up to specs, all up to regs. You've got the gas bottle in the bottom, gas bottle cupboard. You've got the dropout vent in the bottom, all the gas pipe and everything. That was £139, and that was from eBay. Um, the gas bottle is a Camping Gas 907, I believe it is. Gas bottle, which full and delivered, was £95. And then the last item on the list is the toilet. So I think we've got Thetford 140 or 145 camping toilet, which is in the under the bed that was 65 pounds and 99 pence which brings us to the end of the list meaning we've got a grand total for you including the purchase price of the van as it sits now retail prices to build this van would be so i've just been sat editing this video ready for you guys to watch it and realize that we've got a few discrepancies and we'd also forgotten to mention a few things as well so the first one was earlier in the video we were talking about the audio install the underseat sub I said was four two nine ninety nine or something. Um, we'd edited it on the screen, but the price that was actually one five nine ninety nine four two nine ninety nine was the package deal with the front speakers and the sub to save you a little bit of money. So that was the first one, um, and then there was bits that we'd forgotten, which Abby pointed out. One of the main ones was the fact that I was sat at it, which was the Avano table. So the Avano table leg kit, everything done to bolt into the van is £240. Um, we also forgot to mention the actual hookup point itself that went onto the van, so that was supplied by the guys at Custom V Dubs, and that is £60. Um, and then a couple of other bits that we completely forgot about was the plywood for the walls, so all the wall panelling, and the plywood for the floor. So we've got 3.5mm ply on the walls, 12mm ply on the floor. All we did was buy the... Um, raw boards and someone very very kindly who didn't want to be mentioned um sent me the drawings for those so we could cnc them ourselves on my brother's machine so it was only the materials and a little bit of labor on them so for the plywood walls was 75 pounds and for the plywood floor was 40 pounds and then the lino flooring that went over the top of the floor as well that was 50 pounds which gives us a grand total of thirty thousand. £834.30 and, and I'm pretty sure I've still missed a few bits off here and there but we're around about the area I'd say give or take a few hundred pounds that is the cost to build the van as it is at the moment but yeah 30 grand it's more than I expected it to be it's um I expected sort of mid 20s mid to just over mid 20s but yeah 30 grand as it is. There's no labour on that. None of my labour's on that at all. The air ride fitting labour wasn't on it. So yeah, it's easy to see how some of these vans are selling at 80, 90 grand when they're new, brand new out of the factory, considering they're 40, 50 grand for the base van. So yeah, there's a breakdown of how much it'd cost to take a empty X plumbers panel van and turn it into a pretty cool looking camper van that's ready to use getaway now obviously you can do it a lot cheaper than i have 
um, and there's ways of saving money there was ways of you could spend more money than we have on this as well it's not by no means the most most well spec crazy spend build but I'm super happy with the way it's turned out it works how I want it to work we get away in it I've got more I think I mentioned it at the end of the video I've got more trips planned coming up so yeah that was the cost hopefully you've enjoyed it guys and yeah if it, was it a shock to you guys how much it was as well let me know in the comments is that do you think that's silly amount of money to spend on a van I can't see us getting back what it's worth or what's been spent on it at all um, because if it's age it's mileage and the body work it needs painting and things but we're not painting it we're leaving it as it is because it's character and it means we can get away park the van up and not worry about it getting scratched or dented in a car park but yeah let's not continue with any more of Dan's waffling that's how much it costs to build or it would cost to build we'll leave it there Hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. We've got some stuff planned coming up over the next few weeks. So, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. Enjoy this absolutely beautiful weather. Until next time, enjoy.